So primitive is the basic, okay, main type of data in Java, okay, like maybe you can think it as int or float, okay, whatever, right? So these are primitive data types. And the most important thing is uh, we can save the data, uh, the value, payment, okay, inside the variable directly. We don't need any reference to the address of the memory or any other thing. It is very simple. Primitive type data can save okay, uh, directly inside the uh, this box. Okay, you can think inside this memory, all the variables came with. Okay, so that's it. that's why it is called primitive. Okay, uh, okay. So let's move on to this type of data. Okay. And there are many types inside the Java, the byte, okay, and also short, int, long, okay, float, double, all these are primitive type. So there's a program to uh, find such kind of primitive and some information about uh, these kind of primitive type data. And also Boolean, char, or char, okay, is also primitive type. So in this program, okay, primitive Java. We have a class, primitive Java, this one, okay? This is the class I'm talking about, primitive Java. And this is only the class, okay, primitive class. Inside, we have several, okay, uh, methods. And in fact, uh, for this short program, I have taken only one method, the main, okay? Inside the main method, we are, okay, declaring uh, and defining okay some data type. So let's see what what this program looks like. The first thing is in line number fifteen. It, it is declaring okay about the char type of data. Okay, there's a variable a which is type char. Okay, and we have okay this character data. Just one okay character g. Okay, capital G. There's another variable, i, okay, which is type of int, integer type, having the value, okay, payment, 89. There's another variable, okay, which is, okay, byte, okay, right? So the byte has, okay, uh, b, okay, the variable name, and the value is 4, okay? And uh, the, this variable, s, it is a short okay, type having the value 56. Uh, this one in line 26. So this is how you okay, declare a variable with different types, primitive type data, right? This is the example in this class. So it double A is have the value 4.35 okay, and so on up to the last number two, okay, this one. And also we have float type variable f having the value 4.7333 and so on. Uh, okay, so all these are okay variables and having different types, okay, different primitive types. Here in line number 29, we are going to okay print out all these characters, all these uh, actually these primitive type data, okay, variables, in, along with uh, its, along with its value, that's all, okay. So, it is a very simple program, very simple program. Just look here, okay. The only thing is we have to print out the variable and its value, theme, that's all. So, let's, okay, compile it first. If there's a mistake or not, just check it. So the program seems happy, okay? We can just run it, okay? That's okay. Right click and run the file, that's okay. And now we got the results, this one. Okay. So as you can see here, right? We have the char or char type data uh, having the value G, okay? Just one character. Integer type having the value 89 byte has okay, 4. 
short 56 and uh, float has again okay, this type of data double has okay, this type of data so you can see now that in the float okay we can put okay less number of information data in comparison to the double so if you want to get more precise number bigger number in okay after decimal okay 4.3554 up to long decimals so you should use double otherwise uh, if you want to get less precision after the dot decimal okay four points and so on so you in that case you should use float so float is is used for okay less precision less numbers after the decimal but the double is used for more precision in numbers uh, after the decimal okay so it holds more da more data more information after the decimal in comparison to the float so okay uh, that's all for this okay exercise of the uh, primitive okay? Uh, okay this is a very easy program I think uh, you can do it easily as well so should I move on that's okay good very easy so let's move to the next program the next program is Uh, from the object data type in your manual. So the object data type is uh, structured, okay? Object data is uh, structured data. And it it is saving the information value payment, okay, inside using the memory reference, memory address, okay? So <clears throat> you can think this as uh, classes, okay? The classes have, okay, are called object data type. Also, in, in friends, uh, interface, interfaces, arrays, strings. Uh, strings are actually uh, sometimes considered as primitive and other time considered as uh, primitive uh, data, uh, non-primitive data type. But uh, the arrays and classes are obvious example of prim, uh, object data types. So these okay data types save inside its memory uh, by reference the value payment okay so it can save the value payment inside using the reference or memory address that's all so the next program is uh, about the uh, uh, the object data type okay uh, non primitive data type an example is here, okay in your manual. A uh, example is this program, this one. Okay? And we are okay, going to uh, study this program with the single class string example. That's all. And there's only one method, single method as well, okay, which is called static void main. Uh, inside, you can see now that we have the number one on line number 14, right? Uh, string type okay s1 variable having the string name hello okay uh, this is the string inside the double code this one another string okay s2 type okay the string same one okay? uh, s2 have the same actually okay same string but how can you identify as by the programming that they are exactly the same the values came at inside s1 and s2 is the same you can see it that's okay but by programming how can you identify they are exactly same so the thing is okay you can see in line number 16 we have to okay print this line okay by how uh, the system out print line and then s1 Okay. So we will take the string, the first string, S1, okay, the first string, S1, and there's a method because we have declared this variable, but the string is an object type, okay, data. So we can in instantiate, okay, this class S1 string object. So S1 is an object. So now we can 
have all the methods of S1. So, for example, I will show you now. So, if, let's say S1. We have declared a string type, okay, where they type data S1. And in fact, this S1 is an object. How? Because I can access all the methods of the object string S1 from here. So if we put the dot, I can access all the methods inside. So th there are many methods inside the this object S1. So we can access any kind of object uh, method. Like maybe uh, we have a compare uh, to ignore cases, concat, okay, adding together, and there's so many, okay. You can see here, uh, we can in, uh, understand how much is the length inside the string, what is the length of the string, it is 15 uh, characters inside or 10 characters inside, that's all. Also, we can uh, find that a string is empty or not, okay, and also there's so many methods inside, okay. So you, if you wish, you can study this all one by one. Just practice for practice. Okay, uh, we can trim the string, and we can divide. Okay, and delete some part of the string. That's also possible using the trim method. And there are many methods inside. That's okay. So we once it is an object, we can access all the methods of the object. So this is an example. This time I'm showing you. So an object can have okay many methods inside so we can have many methods for the string s1 inside so here okay as you can see we choose and compare to which is the method okay uh, somewhere here if I can find okay compare to this one okay so we are okay uh, taking this method and it needs okay another string it needs another string to compare because I want to compare a string by which other object, okay, by which other object. So I can compare a string by another string. This is also valid, okay. So this is what uh, it, is, it is done here, right? We compare, right, uh, compare to another string which is S2. So now we are comparing two strings together, right? S1 and S2 together to see whether they are exactly the same or not or so on, okay? Whatever is there. So we are comparing two strings together here, right? Now, uh, after this, okay, we will also go for print line, the next line, 17, string length, okay? Now it comes here, okay? Just now I show you, okay, the string length. So now we are okay in the process of getting the length of the string. How much is the length of the string? So the length is measured by each character one by one. Okay, let's say one, two, three, four, five, like this way. Okay, so we are finding the length by this method. Okay, in this line. Next, okay, we are going to and you will find this one. I just now I have shown you the methods all of all the objects. Of the string, right? If you don't believe, yes, I will show you again one more time. Okay, so the length is here. Okay, the method is up. This one. Okay, it will return the length of the string. That's all. Okay, now happy. Okay, let's uh, let's start with this one. That's all. So the string. Okay, uh, there's another string. Okay, we are now declaring. It another string uh, s1 lower s1 lower so what does it mean it means that we are going to lower the cases the small letters okay of the string s1 which is hello okay the capital we want to lower so to low okay uh, to write in low case we have to call another method which is inside the string okay object to lower case exactly the same thing here as you can see to lowercase yes, somewhere here right so this is these are the built-in okay, methods to uh, uppercase and to where is this, this one okay to lowercase this one 
exactly right so we are doing the, all these things together okay using this uh, object these methods of the object string s1 and uh, the last line is about the system out print line s1 lower so uh, we have declared okay s1 lower and what is inside it will be the value will come payment will come inside the string using this method okay and it will be saved as uh, as an ob uh, variable okay uh, object type okay uh, s1 lower but we don't see we will not see okay the value inside so to print out this value we are using this line s uh, print line s1 lower so it will give the value okay of this one payment of this one okay that's all so that's why we write this line okay okay let's move on so i will just compile this one right and run it again so a string example right select the the file right and string example and write right. and run the file that's all okay we got it okay so what we got to now we got okay the first one zero so this means completion of the string okay the resulted for zero this means uh, the s1 is compared to s2 and we find that there's no okay difference between s1 and s2 as per the value okay they are the same that's why it is zero okay. the next thing is string length is five this means the length of the string inside okay hello this is string value human is five so it is obvious right h e l l o yani all together how many characters just five characters and uh what is the s1 lower putting every character in lower case okay small character it will bring h e l l o is small right so this is okay we got it by this line. that's all very easy okay simple program so any any problem in this one anybody should i move on that's okay okay so let's move to the next one okay i will just go to the next one okay so let's uh, there's another class wrapping wrapper class okay and the examples are okay it will wrap up okay uh, so you will see it by example that what does it mean okay okay let's go for the uh, next page number 7 your manual uh, the program is called integer class example 1 integer class example 1 okay so let's move to the integer class example 1 this one so in this example okay uh, we are going to okay think about yes uh okay the java program okay to convert primitive into objects okay that's okay and auto boxing example of integer to in integer okay like this so uh what is inside the, this class integer class example one there is one method that is called main okay okay inside we have a variable a type int value 20 okay another variable okay integer but this integer okay is such a way this is a again a type of this variable i that's okay but we don't see this is built in right so what it does it does take okay integer okay so what is integer actually so if you go for okay that dot you will find all the methods with integer so integer is in fact an object not okay any other thing 
So it is an object, but we declare it as variable. And uh, uh, honestly speaking, you think it as an a, another class, integer. Okay? This is a class actually. And because in Java we can use okay user defined class or built in class, that's okay. So is there someone giving me some message? No, nothing. Everything okay from your side? Okay, right? Okay. So I will move. So integer is a class actually, okay? And because you know classes are always represented by capital, capital letter. The first le the first okay, uh, where uh, I mean say first letter or first character will be capital always for the class. So as per the sense of okay common sense, we can think that this is a class. But uh, this is maybe okay. This may be uh, not user type actually. It is built in class in fact. Okay. So the class okay is integer okay, which is used as a type for i. So rather than writing int type okay, we are writing okay. So if you put the dot for this one, we will not find okay any uh, any uh, method okay which is coming for this one, and it is just showing that it is a simply okay a class. So this is not a met, uh, object in this here, but here, because integer is a class inside the Java compiler, okay, Java uh, complete system, Java system, and this integer class is here declared as type, okay, like int, like uh, double, a, like float, okay, it is a type, integer. So rather than writing int, we are writing integer. And from this integer, I can access all the methods, okay? Because classes may have many methods. So in the same way, we have many methods. Classes and objects have methods. So uh, for here, okay, we can see that this class, okay, have many methods, okay? And we will access this method, one of the methods, okay? That is called value of. See here? So it is inside value of. So it should be here, the value of this one. Okay? So there are two types of okay methods inside. Actually, th these are just argument difference. Okay, value of integer i, and if we have two okay arguments or means like if there's one string and one radix, or uh, one integer. Okay, you can think. Then we use this method. Otherwise, if there's one okay number integer type we will use this one this method okay so there are two methods actually but we are using the first one this one value of int i okay? this this value uh, this method actually so inside we are taking from value of this method okay from this method value of we are putting inside some variable i and getting what getting some result okay so it will be appear by result, okay, in the final uh, result example. Okay, I mean after running this program, that's okay, no problem. So the thing is, okay, we are using this method, value of of this integer type, okay, class. And okay, uh, let's okay move it so that we can understand better. So now in this class integer, we are accessing the method, okay, value of. A. A is the variable, the same one, right? And uh, so, what will it will do? What uh, what will it do? It will okay convert into int into integer, okay, clearly. So it will convert int this int, okay, A because because A is int in type. So it will convert this variable, okay convert a variable which is in type into integer type okay so now uh, we are converting in type variable into integer type variable right this a so in integer i will take the value of a 
as an integer i. Okay, so i is a variable, integer is type, and we are taking in type variable a and converting and putting value, keymet of this one, value of a 20, okay, inside i. So what is the advantage? Just this is the advantage, uh, this is only the example for showing you how to convert the things, okay? That's all, don't worry. Okay, so, okay, let's move on. And then the line number 14 will show you integer, okay? The same, okay? The same type, okay? And j, okay, this is the j, another variable, j. Uh, again, it is assigned the value of a, okay? So where is a? This is the a, right? So this a will come here, right? So now you can see there's no need of conversion like this one here, okay? This is also possible. That is called auto boxing. This is called auto boxing. And you're putting uh, from one box to another box, okay? Of different type, maybe to integer type. So from taking a uh, value from one box to another box, auto boxing, okay? Now co uh, compiler uh, will write integer value A of A, okay? See here? So uh, we don't need to write this, okay? Always. It will be compiled and run by, by the compiler by using the same method, okay? This one. So we don't need to care about all these things. That's okay. Uh, finally, okay, system out print line will print A and the value of A, payment, I, the value of I, and J and value of J. So do you expect what should be the value in this case? What do you think? Okay, let's run it. So compile and run it. So I believe there will be no change, right? What do you think? Okay, run it. So see here, okay, now we have result A equal to 20, I equal to 20, J equal to 20. So whatever is there, it is not changed, right? Because the value A uh, have, I mean the this box, or uh, this variable A has value 20, HEMA 20, which is inside I okay other uh, but just you can think that it has changed into integer type that's okay but the value didn't change right it is put inside I the same value and again it is put inside J the same value so the result will be the same right there will be no change right that's why you can do some other experimentation let's say if you change the value of A as only uh, 15 uh, even in, uh, longer, 150. Okay, that's okay. So compile and run it and see the result. That's what's going on. This way. Run it. Okay, the same. Exactly the same. So the values are just replacing from box to box. Okay, uh, that's all. So let's move to the next example. Uh, we are going for another example for the, from the next page number 8 in your exercise manual. It is about the public class, okay, character class example. So here we are thinking about character classes, characters, okay, character class example. Character wrapping, in the same way, okay, we are now wrapping, we are doing the, exactly the same thing. But this time, rather than integer, we are going for characters, okay? That's all. So let's run this program, character class example, which is here, okay? So this one, I will just run it, okay? So exactly the same thing. Here, see, uh, we have two characters, variable, okay? These are the variable, uh, ch1, ch2 of char type, okay? Character type. Uh, variables and we are putting inside two characters value, keyword, okay, char1 equal to 9, 
charge to uh, I mean CH19 CH2 V okay and boolean have okay B1 B2 this is uh, these two variables are B1 B2 are boolean type okay and then we have okay uh, we are putting inside the value of B1 B2 like this one character dot is digit okay is digit uh, so this is the way uh, data uh, type you can think it's class okay and we can access the method okay method char okay a character we may have many methods okay so we are accessing is this it okay the method this one and we are taking inside some characters okay and converting into uh, uh, this it okay that's all is this it that's all so this is the method built-in method is this it and we are taking ch1 ch1 then now the value okay character so taking in nine the character nine okay and do something so you will get the result that's okay actually we are converting it okay that's okay in boolean okay boolean type okay b1 so we are putting uh, ch1 value came back as using the method is this it and then okay the whole okay result in this b1 okay which is boolean in the same way we are doing for b2 the same thing and finally we are okay putting the string str1 str2 two variables of string type and ch1 ch2 like this way okay so in line 20 the string str1 equal to ch1 this one okay it plus so we will put the value of ch1 which is 9 okay character just 9 so 9 is a digit of b1 okay then we will put the value of this one inside the ball this b1 okay boolean time and uh, in the same way we are doing the same thing for str2 in the same way then we are okay uh, printing str1 and str2 so you will get finally the result str1 str2 so what is inside str1 str2 at this moment you will get it now so let's build it then you can understand what's going on okay and let's run it so you can see here right nine is a digit is true Okay. And V is is it is false. Got it? So the boolean, okay. Now you, you can understand. The boolean is always used for okay checking the two things, true or false, because booleans okay are such a variable uh, variable type. Okay. So the boolean are variable types. It can be true or false. Okay. So the same thing is here, right? See here. Uh, every time we are okay assigning the value character dot is digit we are comparing okay uh, ch1 whether it is a character is digit or not okay here here we are comparing whether it is a digit or not okay so if it is a digit for example 9 is a digit so it will return b1 true okay printed here right b1 is true okay so now we will get from b1 okay which is true at this moment as okay uh, 9 is a digit okay is is true okay here yeah, is true this one and the another one okay when we put the v here in the chart 2 uh, cs2 then it will again find that whether it is a digit or not if it is not because uh, v is not a digit so it will put the value of boolean false b2 so it will print that v is a digit is false okay this one we can try with another i put a character like here a okay 
and here okay we put some uh, another a okay no problem b okay let's say what will happen in this case can you guess because these are not desert so yes it will be four right so if we run it and we will find that false both times because A and B are not digits, so it will be false. In case of if we put okay, a digit like both of them, it will be true, right? Like two and let's say and we'll get five, okay? Then it will be okay, like true. Because both of them are digits numbers, right? Okay, like this. Okay, got it. So is it okay? Good? No problem? Okay. Okay, let's move to the next one. Okay, uh, we are going for next mutable objects. So mutable objects are, okay, uh, just run the program, then I will show you what does it mean. It will be clear. Uh, mutate, okay, it will, okay, uh, change, okay, that's all. Okay, uh, I will show you the objects, how uh, uh, the class is point, okay. So let's go for the class point, okay, here in this one. So, okay, class point. Where is this class? I think this one. Okay, let's start this one. Like this one. That's okay. So, we have a class point. Okay. Uh, we are going to okay, demonstrate mutable objects. That's all. So, public class point has okay, uh, data okay which is called okay characteristics or some value okay in type length variable in type width variable okay okay then we are going to have okay how many three methods okay inside the point class the method is insert calculate area and the main okay so let's see if from the main what's going on first. Okay. So we have already declared this variable int length, int width. Okay. So it will be available to all these public classes. Okay. That's okay. Uh, public methods. That's okay. Uh, the next thing is in, in the program will the control will start from the main function. Okay. This one main method. So now here, okay, we will go for the next line 22 line number 22 uh, because point is a class so we are now going to generate uh, constructors okay so this is a kind of okay a new object okay new object okay whose name is r1 so r1 of type point <coughs> excuse me so r1 is a type point which is a class right class this one so point class type r1 object is created now we're using the new and this is the instantiation of the class okay the object creator okay generator so the point this one is okay a class object generator you can think like this and we are creating a new class, okay? A new object, R1, that's okay. R1 is an object. And another one is R2. R2 is another object using the same, okay? Uh, generator, okay? Point, this one. So these R1, R2 are now two objects. After this, okay, we are going to access method of the object. Okay, R1, insert method, okay? Which is here actually okay we have uh, written the insert method here right so it will call this method from here okay it will 
take this uh, value increment from here, right? Okay, so and it will take okay uh, put inside as an argument or parameter the two values which is required by this okay method uh, int l int w. So it will take eleven as l five as w. That's okay. And uh, in the same way, we are okay taking r2 object and accessing the insert method, the same one, with different value, that's all. And finally, we will uh, go for r1 dot another method, calculate area, this one, second one, okay? And that's because r1, r2s are different, so we will get different, okay? Calculate area. Okay, uh, okay, so let's go, go for insert one, okay, this method. So this method has, okay, two things. It is taking int L and int W and giving back, okay. Uh, actually, this is void, so it will not return any value, but assign just value, okay, because the return type is void. Void means uh, it will not return anything, okay. It will not return any value, okay? Any value, Murphy payment. But it will just assign something to something. Maybe it is possible. So that's what it does, okay? In the insert method, it takes L and W and put the value of L and W as length and width, the same one, okay? Like this, length and width. Because here, we don't have any value, payment, okay? In the length variable or width variable. These two boxes are empty. There's nothing inside. So it will take payment from here, L and W, which is inserted by, okay, uh, at the end in the main method. That's all, okay? Okay, uh, the next one is about that. Is it okay? Clear? Good? So, okay, let's go to the next method. And we go. Calculate India. In this one, we are printing out, okay, one line area equal to the length and width but where is the length and width it is here right the same thing or you can think like now we have assigned length and width which is available here also so we can just put the same value here okay that's all and uh, because we are inserting just different okay values for r1 and r2 then we will get different areas as well right okay uh, is it okay clear very clear I think uh, there's nothing so much difficult right so okay yeah okay uh, this is the I will run and then finish that. so I will run this one that's okay just run this program and see the result that's all So now we have the point build, okay, run the program, see the result, that's all. So now we have, okay, the area, different area for different length and width, okay, which is here. 